Well, looks like we're about to review another anime video game. But before we get started, all right. Sorry, it's just whenever we do these games, we have a tendency to run into some overly emotional anime fanboys. Now, now we're sure that most of the people watching this video are calm and rational, can handle a little bit of criticism, but you know, just in case. Okay, One Piece Burning Blood. This game features characters from the popular anime duking it out in giant arenas. We like this type of gameplay when it comes to anime titles, as it gives the character plenty of room to unleash their destructive powers. As for the camera in this game, it is pretty well implemented. You have the option to adjust it, making it close or pushed back. Either way, it stays focused on the fighters and doesn't run into the walls, or get all perky-jerky. In the conflict of battle, there's a normal attack and there's a ranged attack, but there's also the ability to jump, block, and use a unique power move. The guarding can be broken into, so we feel the best defense here are sidesteps. This allows you to do a quick step to the left or the right. If done correctly, this will leave your opponent wide open for the counter strike. Each character also possesses special attacks which are performed with a trigger button in conjunction with one of the face buttons. Personally, we don't really think of these types of games as fighting games. To us, we classify them more as brawlers. In games like Street Fighter or Blaze Blue, each character has their own personalized control set, which really makes them feel different from others. In games like these, it's really more of a button mash fest, as the controls are the same for all, and it is only in the character's unique attacks in which there's any real difference. I guess if you want to get technical, you can also put Super Smash Bros. in the same category as well. Every character possesses a burning gauge that can be filled over time. When the gauge is filled all the way, Awakening can be activated. In this state, the chosen character receives a power boost for a short period of time. You know, you've seen it before. When the Awakening button is pressed again during this state, the character will perform their ultimate attack. Assuming, of course, that when you unleash it, it connects with your opponent. Also, if the opponent is at low health, the ultimate attack will finish them off with a grand impact making them cry like a mighty number nine backer on launch day. For every battle, up to three attack characters can be used, and you can swap between them. You can also perform unity chains, where you can swap out between characters during an attack. Unity assists when a comrade can come to the rescue in the midst of a beatdown, and a unity clash that can break the unity assist off. All these moves will cost some notches on the burning gauge, so you will have to keep that in mind during the fight. When your chosen warrior goes down in battle, another one of your teammates will take their place, and then the battle will resume until all members of one side has been eliminated. Now like in other fighting games, there are support characters that you can summon at any time to help you out in the fight. Some of the characters possess special abilities, like Lugia, users who can absorb attacks without taking damage for a period of time, which can make them tricky to fight. Sticking and moving is probably the most important factor here, as you will have to use your normal assaults to stagger your opponent to find the right opening to use your bigger maneuvers. Also, when a fighter gets knocked down, they will have about a few seconds of invulnerability before they get back up, so you don't want to go in rushing in and wasting your assaults. One thing we found annoying was that when your character gets nailed, there's a pretty big knockback where you are going to be stunned for a couple of seconds. This is going to leave your character open for a string of assaults that can take down a good chunk of your health. Overall, we do find the brawling to be fun as it manages to tickle that place that only animes can touch. The controls work fine, and there is a bit of a variety here that will allow you to implore some strategy as you face your opponents. Like for example, the Unity system which allows you to utilize your teammates to good effect. This aspect of combat we really did enjoy, however, the combat does feel a tad slower than other anime offerings, like when comparing it to the awesome J-Star's Victory vs. Plus. For the game's story mode, you will play through the Paramount War arc where Luffy tries to rescue his brother Ace in the midst of an all-out battle between the Marines and the Pirates. The story mode features nicely rendered cutscenes that engross you into the storytelling. That and the cell shading graphics are well done here. And also not surprising, every female character in this game just so happens to have breasts the size of Titan and Rey. There are two of Saturn's moons. Get educated. 
For every completed battle, characters will receive experience points to level up. There are four different episodes in which you can follow a handful of characters and go through their experience during the War Arc event. Just like most anime brawlers, the latter episodes get pretty cheap with enemies featuring boosted power levels. Now the game does have a pretty good sized roster, however in the story arc it only focuses on a few select characters. Replaying the arc though is the best way to obtain money, because you'll need that in order to purchase the other characters in the game. As for the other modes in the game, there is our personal favorite, the Wanted Poster Challenges, where you can take your team of pirates into battle to take down a group with varying power levels. There is Free Battle, where one player, or two, can battle using the roster that you required, and there is the Pirate Flag Battle. This kind of reminds us of Mortal Kombat X's Faction Warfare. You choose your affiliation and go to battle in order to gain ground for your side by either attacking or defending certain areas. You can battle against CPU-controlled fighters or face off against other players online. Speaking of online... Okay, is this something just happens to us with these anime games? We couldn't get an online connection. This exact same thing happened to us with Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. Now, I know it's not our online connection. Hell, we recently played Overwatch for crying out loud. You know, that one game where you need an online connection to play it? So we can't comment on how the online works at this time. Oh, yes, we can. It sucks. You got this going on. Anime is weird. And by weird, you mean awesome! So what do we think of Burning Blood? Does it do for us what the excellent Ninja Storm series did for Naruto? Well, not quite, but it's still an okay experience. The combat is your typical anime brawler setup, but it does get the job done. It's a shame that the story mode only focuses on one arc, though, as even if you're not familiar with One Piece, there is still plenty of emotion here to make you care about what is happening to the cast. The other modes do provide some enjoyment as well. Except for online. How that is, your guess is as good as ours. For a game like this, we feel that you can definitely wait for a price drop. Maybe around $30 or so. I mean, if you're a One Piece fan, you've probably already made up your mind, and it really should hit the spot. For others, it's at the very least worth a rental, if you're curious about it. The nice thing about these types of games is that they can sometimes open the door for new potential fans to the series. And that is always a good thing. Well, there you guys go. That was One Piece Burning Blood. Now, as an anime fan, I hesitate to say that unfortunately I never got into One Piece. But then again, we got the four kids version, which probably explains why. Look it up. Well, it is the number one anime in Japan. So gotta give credit where credit is due. Now, before you go, and if I haven't already made you mad, please click that red subscribe button right down below us. It would do us a lot of great wondrous things if you did. Besides, there's a lot of content for you to check out. Look over there. We got more game reviews. We got a Tales of Retrospective that we do. Trust me, we do. We have speed runs. <laughs> hey, we do it for you, and that's what keeps it going strong. By fans, for fans of the video game world. So you know what? Keep on gaming, and we'll see you next time.